Brenda Marie Fitzpatrick Broughton. I was born in New Orleans on June 4th, 1952, right up there on the hill, right, uh, the hill right across from Beale Ford High School in a two-bedroom home, two-room home. My mom's name, it was Dorothy Ann Harris Fitzpatrick. My dad's name is Brazil Fitzpatrick. My mom was born in um, Etta, Mississippi. And my dad was born in Algoma, Mississippi. My mom was working at a cafe here, directly across uh, the railroad track here. They had a barber shop there. And for right now, I can't remember the name, but it's right where Sam Mosley practiced. It was right in there, it was a cafe there. And she worked there. And my dad would catch the train up here. And for what I don't know, and that's how he met her. I don't, I can't remember the cafe. I just know she worked there when she was, when she was, uh, I think, 13. And they got married when she was 14. And my dad was 18. My dad, um, he waxed floors with um, a lot of different guys I am in. One of the names that stands out the most was Wallace Staggs. He worked with him and waxed floors and he did cleaning, at uh, cleaning up um, factories in the afternoon. I'm assuming they lived in that two room house up there across Washington Avenue. Cause they never, uh, well, which is Oak Street now. They never, I never asked, you know, and uh, I just know they didn't live with my grandparents. They lived in that house, you know. Nine, seven girls and two boys. I'm the oldest girl. And my brother, uh, Brazil Fitzpatrick Jr. He's the oldest uh, boy and my sister, uh, Deborah Shackelford, and after Deborah was David, and after David was Kathy, and after Kathy was uh, Sarah, and after Sarah was Rosie, and after Rosie was Daphne and Regina. Ninth, ninth or tenth grade, because we lived behind, it was houses behind Bill Ford School, and we lived back there. That's how I can tell you. So he and I were at uh, W.P. Daniel. When the, when the twins were born? When the twins were born. She cleaned homes for a while until uh, the shirt factory started hiring and she went there. And she worked there uh, until she passed. Well, we'd like any other neighborhood. Uh, you play a while and you fight a while, <laughs> you know. It was nice though. We had um, the parents, as I got older, when I was younger, I was you know, like other kids, they always tell you everything you do. <laughs> you know? But as I got older and I, I realized they were looking out after us, you know, and it was, it, it was beautiful. It was, it was beautiful. I remember one lady, uh, her name was Miss Lovey. And Miss um, Lovey had the, beautiful is better in home yard you know and we were always playing ball and our balls went in her yard and she never would give them to us and mr d would go to town we go knock on the door and he'd give us our balls you know and i didn't like her you know because she was so mean but i remember when i was in first grade we uh you know the um health department came to the school and gave and vaccinated us and uh and i remember i was uh second grade no i was first grade and uh the parents were there that could be there because my parents they were working and i didn't have nobody so and they called my name and i was getting ready to go behind the sheets to get my shot and they said where's your mom i said well she couldn't come and miss lovey come from behind the sheets and my whole perspective changed. You know, I'm like, Miss Lovey? You know, <laughs> and I, I liked her and loved her ever since then, you know, but she still wouldn't give us our balls or nothing back, you know. <laughs> but, 
we always call her Miss Sparks. It was Sparks, yeah, Miss Lovey Sparks. Very, very prim and proper and dressed. I mean, she was to the, just dress, dressed up all the time, you know, just, I mean, in her house was, we would go there, you know, like, and just knock on the door, you know, just, just, just to be knocking on the door, I would. <laughs> what do you need? What do you want? I ain't got nothing. You know, you ain't not getting that ball. And she, but I would look in the house. I'm like, wow, everything is so neat. Little dollies everywhere, you know. <laughs> so, but I, like I said, when I got older, and when she did that, I mean, not older, but when I saw her, what, what she did, you know, she was there to stand in for me, you know, and take care of me if I got sick from the shot, you know. I just loved her, you know, then, you know, but I just changed my whole perspective about her, you know. We played together, and like I said, we fought too, you know, but we just would go up there and uh, be a forward baseball, Simon. We'd go down there and we played baseball. I mean, we just have us a good time. And then when the afternoon came, we'd stand in the streets. Every kid up there on their hill stood in the street and played Simon Said or May I. You know, I mean, you could see, see kids. <laughs> You know, everybody was there. You know, we we played those games and we uh, we just had a good time. You know, it was just it was just it was just it was just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then um, when the swimming pool came, what well, before the swimming pool came, we were the only one that had a station wagon, and we would go to Tupelo swimming pool. Daddy would pile all the kids and other kids too that could get in that blue station wagon and off to Tupelo we'd go. We'd go swimming in Tupelo and it was just it was just so much fun just playing in all that water. And then when we then later on they got a, a swimming pool. And I remember my mom and uh Miss Madame A. Bowles and I think I don't know who else went down to City Hall about a swimming pool because I think prior to that a couple of kids drowned. I know one particular young man he drowned in the channel you know and it seemed like after that, that things just started going into motion and pretty soon we had a swimming pool down there where we could go swimming you know and we um, would go down there and swim every day after if we once we got all our work done you know and then on Wednesday night it was the parents night we go down there and we stand and we peek through the fence and we watch the, the parents swim you know and just have a good time like wow they can swim <laughs> you know? it was just it was just it was just I don't know I, there's no words to describe it it was just it was just beautiful you know and I, like I said as you when you get older you just like wow you know and Nobody, no kids stayed inside. We were outside. We played from sun up to sundown, and we'd put this rope in a tree, and we'd swing across the yard with that rope, you know, doing tars and yell, you know. <laughs> so and just, I mean, just just having a good time, just getting together, going picking berries, you know, bringing them back, uh, raiding the neighbor's uh, garden when they go to town, you know. <laughs> climbing the tree, shaking the pears out of the tree and standing up there. Whoever could get up that tree will be the lookout and say, here come Miss Kelly, <laughs> you know. We jump down out of that tree, <laughs> squeeze through the fence. And I remember one, one of my friends, she was kind of heavy set, you know, and she came over and I said, let's go in Miss Kelly's tree. I just saw her go down the road, let's get some pears. So I shimmy up the tree and uh, she squeezed through the gate and went and got the tomatoes. But when I was sitting up there eating pears in the tree, I said, here comes Miss Kelly. <laughs> down that tree, I jump. I jump from that tree down to the ground. And we would, we live right next door. But my friend, uh, Gwen, couldn't get out of the uh, garden because it was, she can squeeze back through the gate, you know. So I'm pulling and pulling and pulling. I think I left her. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> but, um, I mean, we, we had, I don't know, it was just, it, it was just beautiful. When I look back on all those kids in the street, like you see on TV, you know, they're just dancing or whatever. We were doing those games. Simon said, may I? And 
and we very seldom had a fight. And when we when we did have one, nobody held a grudge, you know. So throwing rocks, hitting you in the head, you know. And and I never forget one time, we lived behind the school, and it was on a Sunday, and we were out there playing right in front of where the Boys and Girls Club is. We were playing ball or something. And it's one uh, young man, they had just moved to town. I think they came out of the out of the county and they came into the city. I don't know where they came from. And his name was Crow. And I hope you don't watch this. <laughs> but his name is, real name is James Price. So somehow, I come around the corner up there, we were playing, and he hit me in the head with a rock. And it hit me so hard, it stunned me. And I'm like, oh no. And I looked, here got my dad, and he was just riding around on a bicycle, just watching us, just, just playing, you know. And the same time, Crow was getting out of sight. You know, I'm like, he was getting out of sight. I got this big knot on my head, and I didn't do anything. I said, forget it. I'm going to have to take this whipping from Daddy because I'm going to get Crow. So I ran and ran and, and grabbed him by the collar and knocked him down. And we were, f I was fighting him out there right in front of B.R. Ford School in the streets. And I think I got the best of him. And I said, don't you ever hit me in the, in the head with a rock again. You know, freaky, 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 freaky. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Because <laughs> my daddy was way over there. <laughs> he couldn't hear me. So. I'm like, okay, now I gotta take this whooping when I get to the house. So I got home, Daddy said, Blender, you did good. I saw that boy hit you with that rock. I was wondering what you was going to do. It was more of a pat on the back, you know. And I remember um, when my mom, I could tell just as good when she was gonna have a baby. It was always a suitcase under the bed with a lot of baby clothes in it. And I would pick it up and I, and I slide it back under the bed. And then it dawned on me. The baby that was ahead of that baby, they were, those clothes didn't fit that baby. And I go talk to him, Mama, you have another baby? He said, yeah. <laughs> oh, Mama, okay. Well, you could imagine what I said. Uh, so, she, and I after that, I'm like, whoever was born, you know, I'm the oldest girl, I just fit right in, you know, I was second mom, you know, changing diapers, you know, and making sure they were fed, you know, because I know mama worked hard, you know, so in the next couple of years, two and a half years, or one and a half years, they were the same thing over and over again, you know. But I, I, when I got older, I said, wow, I'm glad I come from a big family, you know. Because you know you you couldn't uh, you could get away with a lot of things, but I didn't. I was like a mom. I had to make sure everybody was all right, you know. So I couldn't do any little devilish things, you know, with my sisters and my, my, my brother. Well, my brother was uh, older than me, but I have a younger brother, you know. At that time, I did, you know. But my first teacher, Miss <laughs> Ford, sweet as she wanted to be, just as which is Miss Inez Ford and. A mom, uh, she was a little petite lady, you know, and she, every word that came out of her mouth was precise and just to the end, you know, she could just speak so clearly and I'd be listening to her, you know, but she was a sweetheart. She was just a sweetheart. She always make, made sure that we, you know, whatever she was teaching that we understood and then that we that we you know that, that that it stayed with us, you know. And after her was Miss um, Bramley. Miss Bramley was me. <laughs> Just, but you better get your lesson, you know. And a lot of times she'd fall asleep in a chair, you know, and we start talking. Next thing you know, she'd come, give me your hand. What? <laughs> you thought I was asleep? <laughs> I said you look like you. Mama, you look like you were asleep. <laughs> but, and then she'd tell your mom, you know, so, Brenda, you stop talking, pay attention to Miss Bramley. I did, Mama, I just thought she was asleep. You know, she, I didn't know she saw. All, all the teachers, 
um, that I had at Bill Ford, they were always made sure that, you know, that you understood what you were doing, you know, and so, I mean, it was just, I don't know, it was, it was beautiful, you know, and it was, I don't know, it was, it was, I, I can't even put a name on it, but it was, it was so beautiful, all the pictures in the, in the hallways and the, the teachers and, and, you know, making sure that, you know, you learned and you retained that knowledge and being respectful, you know, you better not say nothing nasty to the teacher, you know, just, just yes ma'am, no ma'am, you know, yes sir, you know, excuse me, you know, and just, I don't know, it was just, it was, it was nice, you know. <laughs> I played the clarinet. You know, Mr. Miller was our band teacher, you know, at, at uh, Ford. It was fun, you know. I never could learn how to play that clarinet that well, so I transitioned over to a, to a majorette, you know. So, and, but it was nice going on those trips, you know, and twirling the baton and not going. To, it, it, it was nice and it was, that's all I don't remember too much about it. I remember it, you know, I just know that it was nice, you know, taking the music lesson, which I never could get the hang of, you know. And it seemed like right after that, we started hearing that we were going to be going to W.P. Daniel and our school was going to close. And it's just like a fragment of my memory just faded away because of, um, I was depressed, and I'm like, I want to stay here. We live right there, you know. What I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to go over there. I want to stay right here at, at BL Ford. But and then, cause I, sometimes I, I wonder to myself. I think, you know, it's hard to think back to that transition when it first started, and I, because I kind of blocked it out because I didn't want to go. You know, you just, you just. It just, it was sad, you know. It was, it was very sad because my, my, my friends, one of my best friends, she came from Red he, uh, Hills, with this East, uh, Red Hill up here, and I was gonna, I wasn't gonna see her anymore, you know. It was, it was, it was sad, and I don't know. Like I said, I just kind of blocked it out, you know. One thing that really stands out, we went somewhere. Hey, Mike, we went, we went somewhere, and um, it was far from home, and I had, my mom gave me seven dollars, that was my lunch money, and I didn't know where to put it. So I stuck it off in my boot, and we were just going down the road, the street, uh, the whole band just twirling, twirling, just, you know, just twirling, and then we got, when we were done, and I went, and I took off my shoe, and my money was gone. And and I was uh, I didn't have lunch that day because we were far from home, and um, and I was asking people and people and somebody said yeah I saw them some money fold up in the street. I said why don't you pick it up? We couldn't stop picking up no money. So that that's that's the saddest thing I remember. I didn't get I didn't get to eat lunch that day. You know they were white little dresses with no the with the little something coming across, little designs coming across here. We had white boots with a little tassel on them, you know, and <laughs> I was always out in the yard. <laughs> Get back, everybody. Twirling that thing and learning how to do your wrist, you know, when you don't have to go through your fingers with it, you know. Yes, we did have the little hats. <laughs> and we don't have no pictures. I don't have no pictures of, of us in the band. At least I've never seen them. I don't remember anybody taking any pictures. That would be, I mean, that that would be an icon right there. And green and gold, because those were the, the colors. But I don't, I've never seen any pictures. No, that was a nervous night. <laughs> I don't remember much about it because I was nervous. I just remember being scared, you know. And I just remember getting there and walking down the hall and people bumping you, 
you know, white people bumping kids, bumping you, you know, you, you knocking your stuff out of your hand. And I remember uh, going to the bathroom and girls laughing at you, you know, white girls was laughing at you. And I grew angry and angry and angrier. And so I said, I just, you know, just forgot about it. And I remember it's one teacher. Her name is Miss Scranton. No, uh, no, she was from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And she was short and she had blonde hair, blonde, about the color of yours, but it was kind of curly. And we were sitting in history class and she was reading a history book about slaves and what was taking place at that time. And as she was reading it, the first word was Negro. And she kept, she said Negro. And then she kept on reading. Each time she had to say Negro, it changed. It became Negro, Negra, Negra, and then Nigger. I remember that so well as if it was yesterday. And it was heartening just to sit there and for her to read that history and call us that. You know, and our ancestors, or maybe not been my ancestors, but you know, people who fought for us, you know, and, and that hurt my heart. I think about that sometime. That was one of the most heartening things of being at Dan, at Debbie P. Daniel. And at that, after that day, she never, she never said Negro again. She just said it all the way out, the Negress, the Negress, you know, and just, and we had to sit there and listen to that, you know. And, and still, like you going, changing classes and sitting out in your chair and sitting on tax. I remember that. And then as, 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 as time went on, you know, and I, but I remember white girls calling the house for my brother phone just would ring and ring and ring and ring and ring and ring and uh, it was always for him. It wasn't wasn't any black girls, it was white girls. It's, they wanted to speak to my brother. And so I, I, I said, Jamie, so I, I would give him the phone. And I remember, remember, remember when the Beatles came out? <laughs> they had the little wigs on. My brother bought one at Ben Franklin downtown. That was Ben Franklin. Was it Ben Franklin downtown? Uh, it was up. It's right in there where the beads and soap is. It was called Ben Franklin. Yeah, it was called Ben Franklin. What Woolworth? It was, I think it was called Ben Franklin. Anyway, he bought a beetle wig in there, and uh, he was <laughs> he would wear it to school. <laughs> Cause the Beatles were out, you know, and uh, he was a good dancer. And I remember uh, we lived right behind the schoolhouse, and a lot of white guys, young white guys, would come out there, and uh, they would call, "JB, come here, come here." He would go out there. He would try to teach him how to do a certain dance, <laughs> and they'd be out there, and they'd be. Doing it. So I wish, and I had camera. I wish I could have took a picture of that, you know. And they all got on their beetle wings. <laughs> And he's teaching them how to dance and how to do certain steps and stuff, you know. It, it was hilarious, you know. So as as time went on, my heart softened just a little bit, you know, because I was still on guard, you know, just softened. But we, I, we still hear the word, I did, nigra, when teachers were teaching something. You know, they, they wouldn't say negro. It was just a nigra, you know. And I remember um, my speech teacher, I can't remember her name. She said it one time also, as I when we first got there. But she kind of changed, you know, and she stopped saying it. So I don't know what happened, you know. And, um, but I never forget, we had a, we had speech class. We had to do something. And, a lot of kids were, well, right now I'm 12th grade, so a lot of uh, kids were doing, were reading, doing something. And I'm like, I was scared. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? 
what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm so, so what I did was, I loved to dance when I was younger. I did a, uh, I did a dance. And like you see the girls on stage and they just twirling around, not shaking their boots or anything like that. I just did a choreography dance that just popped in my head. And uh, the speech teacher, she was so overwhelmed with it. She says, would you do that at graduation? I said, huh? It was, it was something now, it was some kind of talent show the school was gonna have. I says, yes ma'am. And my heart, my mind, after I went back and sat down to my seat, my mind said, what you say that for? I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I never did it because uh, I got married and we left. Left and went to, went to Wisconsin. I'm like, whoosh. <laughs> But I remember right after I did my little dance, some more girls, they did a dance also. But it wasn't what she wanted, and it was, wasn't what I would have never done because it was provocative. You know, it wasn't the, you know, it wasn't like the Fred Astaire movement, you know, all that, you know. I was doing the Fred Astaire movement, you know. I would have graduated in 1970. I got married in, November 69, and uh, by January, no, I would have left in six, we left in December, I think, because January the 1st, I was in Wisconsin, snow up to the top of the wall right there, and I'm like, I cried. I went in the bedroom, I cried, I cried, I wanted to go back home. <laughs> These people are unfriendly up here. My ex came from a family of 15 kids, and there was a lot of them in Wisconsin. And so he wasn't making any money down here. So uh, i never forget, he worked, I think, two weeks. I think he brought home 70 bucks. <laughs> and he went and talked to his dad, you know, and he made some phone calls. And the next thing I know, we were moving to Wisconsin, you know. I'm leaving home at, at 17, you know, and I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, um, I'm still a kid, <laughs> but um, it, it, that was a hard transition. I brought my Southern tradition with me. Nobody would speak at all. And I'm like, wow. And I said, I'm ready to go home. I was saying to myself, I'm ready to go back home, you know, but I stayed. So you finished the high school up there? Yes, I went to a technical school and uh, while I was uh, taking computer classes, and you had, to, you had to take other class, I think I was thinking for word process. So you had to take other classes. So when I got, and I uh, tried for my, not I tried, I did. I had to get a GED also to get in the technical school. So I went down there to Gateway Tech and uh, so I wanted to take my GED test. So um, I took it and I passed it the same day. I was getting ready to take the, the last one. It's five classes that I had. So I was getting ready to take the last one. She said, no, you're doing so well. You might miss it. I said, come on, let's just get it over with. I don't want that hanging on my mind all weekend long. So I took it and passed. I got my, I got my three credits and my um, Diploma, all like a GED and a high school diploma, all, all at the same time, you know. So, uh, I said 2005. That was home. You know? <laughs> I went to my husband one day. I said, "You want to move by himself?" <laughs> he said he was all for it. He said, "Yeah." He said, "We're going." He said, "He said no." He said, "No." He didn't say yeah. He said, "Yes." So we started making the preparation and here we are. We moved down here, we had a, um, my husband, he got this idea from a friend. We bought a school bus and you, I had to take that school bus. You couldn't drive down here on the road with a yellow school bus. They, paint, they painted it purple, any kind of paint. It was purple. We, the girls call it, uh, what's that that dinosaur? Barney. Barney. <laughs> it was purple, so we had 
all our stuff in there. And we had a U-Haul, half, half ton U-Haul truck and tours for the cars and stuff. And so we, we moved back. My oldest daughter, she's in um, uh, Missouri and the baby, I still call her my baby. She's in, uh, let me see if I can say this, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. She didn't go far. <laughs> so, and the other, uh, my two sons that I gave birth to, they are in Wisconsin. And, and my other sons, one's in Atlanta, one's in uh, California, and two are in Wisconsin. They, the other two are in Wisconsin. So I have four sons in Wisconsin. Yeah, four sons in Wisconsin, one in California, and one in Atlanta. Now we went to church at Hall Chapel's church first. We would go there and uh, <laughs> Miss Newton was the uh, Sunday school superintendent. Bless her little sweetheart. We'd have Sunday school in the basement at Hall Chapel Church. And then we would transition upstairs for preaching and stuff. But like most kids, you know, well, at that time, my parents didn't come, didn't go to church that often, but they sure sent us, you know. And that's when we got older, I was gone then. They started going to church themselves, you know. But we went to Hall Chapel. And when Sunday school was over, we'd go upstairs and go out the front door. <laughs> go down to Miss Howard's snack bar and buy us some ice cream and we'd walk through the park going home and all the kids that lived on that hill at that time by the school, we'd just drop them off as we were walking, you know. And uh, but then she got wise. She'd be upstairs. <laughs> she wouldn't let us go. <laughs> well, I remember us saying our Easter speech, you know, and having on our little black patent leather shoes and all that Vaseline on your legs. <laughs> Just shining away in your little candy cane that you bought at Fred Dollar Store. Because they had candy canes all in the window. All, every rainbow color that you can think of. You know what the old Fred was. They always had the candy canes in there. and uh, My dad would go down there and uh, buy us candy cane. And you could get shoes there, two, for, two pair for a dollar. Two pair for five dollars. So by being so many of us, he just get the, he, he pick up the shoes. They all be tied together, you know. <laughs> and I was rough on shoes. I was always climbing a tree or just I was just rough with wearing shoes. So Mama and Dad got tired of buying me shoes, so they bought me some black and white Sal Oxfords. You can't destroy them. They last forever. And kids would tease, I was in the third grade, they would tease me about them, and I'd be trying to scuffle and scuffle and tear them up and tear them up. They didn't tear up, they just got uglier because I was brutalized. <laughs> and I'd be polishing them up. I had to deal with it because, you know, like I said, with so many kids, you know, then finally one day mama looked down and she said, she called daddy, Sonny, take Brendan, take Brendan down there and get her some shoes at free. <laughs> I said, I got some little black uh, low cut boots with a little zipper on the side. I got two pair, cause they were like two for five, two pair for five dollars, you know. And little candy canes, you know, itching you, you <laughs> try to sit down, you know. I don't know why we stopped going to Howard Chapel. I have no idea. I don't know if it closed or what, but we started going to uh, Church of God, which is next door to Howard Snack Bar. And we would sing in the choir and say Easter speeches and Lois Foster Dart Darton and Hazel Edward Hazel Ivory Hazel Edward Ivory was would um, direct us in singing in this in you know in the choir. So we'd be singing in the choir and we went there for a long time. I think we went there until I left left. I don't know, I mean, I can't, there was no other church. Well, we didn't go to Watson Grove. We didn't, I didn't when I was young, younger. Some of my other sisters, younger sisters did, because that's what mom and daddy started going, but we didn't, uh, my brother and myself and my sister 
and I think Kathy and I think Sarah, we went to Church of God, you know, because they wanted us to sing in the choir, so we went, we sung in the choir. <laughs> so, and we took trips. <laughs> and I, re I remember when we were kids, the old Bill Ford gym. Not this one. The old Bill Ford gym was r directly across from where Church of God is. That road right there that goes up the hill, that was a huge gym there because all the parents would go there and dance. My mom and dad went there and they would play basketball there and we would uh, peek through the window because we could see them. <laughs> we would see them in there dancing, you know, and they played ball in there. And um, I think about that sometimes. That was a gym there, you know, we go, we just, they danced there. They had a lot of events there. And I remember where the Beaufort uh, School is uh, the, on Oak Street. Um, there was, you know, where Miss Inez used to live, Ford, right next door in that building right there, that brick building that's boarded up. That was Hope Beasley's snack shop. And we could go in there and then uh, sit at the bar and buy ice cream and potato chips and stuff. And then they had, they had a jukebox in there because I was little. We'd go there and get ice cream and then come back out, peek through the window, and the teenagers were in there dancing. You know, we just, ooh, look at that. <laughs> but I, that was, and then they turned into a, lun a laundry man. But when we were kids, it was Hope Beasley's snack shop. You know, it was just, wow, you know. Older guys, now, under the bridge by, um, you know where Merchants is? On that little street, straight down, there was a huge baseball field. And that's where all, a lot of uh, the, the blacks had, had their baseball games. It was right there. We wasn't allowed to really go down there because it was older older kids, but I snuck down there one time, and <laughs> I don't know what, what, and we were just watching, like, we better go, so we went, we went back, but Bud Cafe, Bud Turner's Cafe, now, uh, uh, his wife was my aunt, Aunt Ada, and it was Aunt Ada and Uncle Bud, we were going in and um, buy hamburgers, you know, because they're the best hamburgers, but that was another place, too. We were not really allowed, but Mama, you know, she didn't really mind because that was her, uh, that's her niece. So we would go in there and buy hamburgers. So I think I might have walked down there and watched them play ball after I got my hamburger and flew back up close to it. <laughs> but they used to play softball there, you know, and you would see a whole lot of adults out there and they all playing ball and just having a good time. You know. Best hamburgers in New Albany. Oh, the hamburgers were so good. Oh, they were just, just delicious. She was a lot of fun, too, because she would say some of the funniest things, you know. She, and she had a little temper, too, you know. Well, she was sweet as she wanted to be. And Uncle Bud had a daughter. Her name was Dolly. Dolly uh, taught me how to put makeup on when I was 14. And she had a brother named Skip. I don't know what happened. I don't even know what happened to Dolly. You know, as time went on, they left, you know. But Uncle Bud, every, I mean, it was like a juke joint, you know. <laughs> a, uh, it wasn't like, you know, it, it was a juke, juke. Now that when I got older, it was a juke joint. You know, they'd be in there just dancing, putting their quarters off in the in the, in the the seabirds. And I'd be at the, I'd go get my hamburger, I'd get my hamburger, and I'd be looking around. Because I was a little old, some, I might have been 12. <laughs> Get my hamburgers, you know, and just looking around. And then I said, well, I better go. I have been down here long enough. I don't want, because Aunt Ada, well, she would, you know, she would watch me, you know, make sure I was all right, you know, and Uncle Bud would too, you know. So. They had a house directly next to uh, the cafe. Remember Stephen Quarters? They used to sell liquor back over in there, you know, and so. We'd be in the car sleep, you know, we raised up, scared to death. It was me and my brother, maybe my other sister. We peek out, you know, and we see people going up the back stairs and coming down. We lay back down because we were scared, you know, being going in Stephen Quarters, you know. So it was small staff cans everywhere. And the, the buildings were brown 
and people, you, we can see people going up those stairs, you know, coming back down, going up those stairs, coming back down, and getting that beer. It was two. It was two story. We very, very seldom saw a two story place, you know, as a kid, you know, and especially a house, you know, because we didn't have. It was all on one floor, but it was two stories back there in the woods, you know. Probably did a whole lot of other stuff back there that we didn't, we that we didn't know. It wasn't our business, you know. So, right across from Renaissance Bank, used to be a grocery store there. It was called Sunflower, and next to that was a little bakery because my uncle worked there, and we would stop by there, walk at home, and go there and buy donuts and stuff. And a lot of people don't remember that, but I do. It was a little small bakery there, and he'd be working back this. Um, and he, we'd buy donuts or whatever, they would go on to the house. And then there was a truck, not a truck, the ice cream mobile. The ice cream mobile you know, went round in a circle. Cause my uncle, he drove that. And I kept saying, how can Uncle June drive that, that thing and it's going round in a circle? Well, he was going straight, it was just, the, part, the body part was going around. But as a kid, I didn't know that, you know, and he drove that and he'd go all over in the neighborhood. We run and we get it, we buy our ice cream from him, you know, and I don't know who he was working for, but he drove that ice cream mach little machine around to all the neighborhoods and we get ice cream. And I remember Dr. Pennebaker, Dr. Pennebaker would come through the neighborhood just like on color purple. He was giving the kids candy and chewing gum, double mint chewing gum. I remember that so well. I don't know if it was Dr. Pennebaker or Dr. Shan. I think it was Dr. Pennebaker though. But it was some it was some white doctor and it was a common name that I've heard all the time. He was giving candy and chewing gum. And we'd run and we'd get our chewing gum, you know, and we'd go, Dr. So and so I wanna say Dr. Pennebaker. He was give, he'd give us candy, all the kids candy, you know, and I said, Wow. Just like on color purple. <laughs> That's when I saw when she was throwing that candy out the back of the train. I'm like, wow, I remember those days, you know. What uncle drove the ice cream? Junior Harris. Well, he was, uh, we call him Uncle June. Lonnie Junior Harris. But he, you know, he drove that ice cream truck because he would, you know, come around over in that area and we'd buy ice cream. I remember going out there, this is good, and all the glazed over donuts right there next to Sunflower. And we, I would buy them and buy a donut, a couple of donuts, and walk on to the house or wherever I was going, which was probably home. But there was a bakery there. When I was a kid, I think I was 14, I worked at, Bun, it was a beauty shop downtown, Bun Funny Kai. You know where the Regent's Bank is? Well, see, my dad did floors. That's how I got the job. Right across from it, it was the movie theater. And then it was, okay, on the corner, it was Miss Lily's dress shop. And it was Bun Funny Kai. I worked there. I would go in, I would shampoo the ladies' hair. And I would go, I, after, I, after I shampoo their hair, I would clean, clean it up, and then go home. And so I would go next door sometime when I got off of work, Miss Lily, and I'd be looking at the clothes, I'm like, wow, it's so pretty, it's so pretty. And I asked, uh, I, I said, Miss Lily, uh, could I put this on layaway? She said, layaway? She said, honey, no. She said, you can, I had a charge account when I was 14 years old. She said, I see you every day. You work right there. And I would, I, I would buy my clothes there, and I would go in and pay them on my, I, I didn't have the actual card, but I had a charge account. If I see anything, I said, Miss Lily, can you put this on my bed? She said, yes, honey. And she was, she had the pretty rosy lips and real pretty black hair. And she was just, she was just, I don't know, I could just hug her. She was just, she was just so sweet. And I, I never knew her last name, but her place was called Lily's Dress Shop. And she let me have a charge account. And then I would be downtown, I would be working, and there was a store called Ken Wynn. It was, you know where the bakery is? Sugary Bakery? It was right in there, or further down. And I would be in there every day looking at the clothes, looking at the clothes. And I said, can I put this on Layaway? And I put stuff on Layaway. And then she said, 
You work, don't you? I said, yes, ma'am. I work up there at Bun Funny Cow. Honey, you don't have to have no land work. You just come on in here and just get what you want. You just pay me. And I'm like, I was 14. <laughs> she trusted me. And I'm like, I go out, get off of work, get my little check, go down and pay all my bills. And I go next door to Miss Lily and pay all my bills. And I got my clothes, you know. And so it, that was, they were, it, was, it was good to be independent, you know, because I kind of helped my mom because it was nine of us. And, she didn't, I, mean, I didn't want to put that responsibility on her buying all my clothes that, you know, I could buy my own clothes, you know, because I did. I bought my own clothes when I was 14.